Have you ever wanted to rattle out perfect faceplates with minimal setup? Then you need to make a lock jig to suit all of your ironmongery needs. I'm Phil Edwards and I'm going to be showing you today how I make my lock jigs. So a lock jig will allow you to repeatedly router out a faceplate and mark your spindle holes on a door. Great for someone like me who's working on doors almost daily. So if you want to be as fast as me on the tools, follow these instructions and you'll get great results. Now to get started we need to get our hands on a nice squared bit of 18mm MDF. Somewhere roughly 30cm by 30cm. Okay so here are the items that I use to mark out my lock jig. So I have a nice sharp pencil, our faceplate for the latch, a square and a tape measure. I can place this faceplate roughly in the centre of my MDF. It doesn't really matter if it's a little bit off, what does matter is that we have it square to the edges. So to get started I could just give it a little mark on the side and square it up. The router cutter and guide that I'll be using is a 12mm long flute cutter with a 16mm guide. This is the exact same combination of cutters that I use for my trend hinge jig so I don't have to have to change any cutters or guides during my work. The only thing I need to change is the depth appropriately. So now we need to start marking out our hole. Because of the 16mm to 12mm cutter, we have got 4mm of space. That's 2mm either side of our faceplate. We can work out what size hole we need to cut out just by adding 4mm to our final faceplate. Sounds complicated, but it's really easy once you've done it once. So I begin by measuring the width of my faceplate, 26mm. I add 4mm, and that gives me 30mm. So we need to measure off 30mm of the width and square it up. Now I can measure the height. This is 56mm. I add 4mm and that gives me 60mm. Again, I mark it and square it up. Now this gives us a rectangle that is larger than our faceplate by 2mm on every side. Now we come over to our chop saw. I like to use the chop saw for cutting out the slot because it gives us an accurate 90 degree cut. I can position it with great accuracy. Now I won't be cutting through the full length of the MDF, only plunging it through to remove the centre area. This gives me a nice solid area around the outside to keep the jig in perfect working order for as long as possible. Now that our faceplate is cut out, we can begin on our side cheeks. These need to be the same height as our jig and long enough to be able to mark out our spindle hole. For this, I just cut an identical MDF panel and cut it down the middle on the chop saw. I can use each piece as a side cheek. Now marking the side position of our first cheek is simple. Our faceplate needs to be the central part of the door, so I mark a centre line down the middle. Next we need to determine the width of our door. In my case I'll be using this on a 34mm door. Half of that is 17mm, so I measure across from our centre line, 17mm, and that gives us the inside of where our cheek will sit. I use Mitre Bond super glue to place it accurately, then on the front I can countersink in a couple of screws to keep it in permanently. Make sure the screws are countersunk below the surface so they do not affect the base of the router when you're using this jig. Now that I have one side of the cheek on, I can mark the spindle hole. On this latch, the height of the spindle is half of our faceplate. So I can mark a centre line again and measure the centre of my spindle to the front of the faceplate. 58mm. So now I can measure up from the centre line across the cheek 58mm square and drill through with a 3mm bit. When we place the jig on the door, we can re-drill through this hole on the outside to mark our spindle centre. So when the jig is removed, we can use our selected spade bit to make the spindle hole larger. I fit the second cheek in situ on the door. This will give me an exact placement for it instead of measuring across and getting it off by a millimetre uh, and risk ruining the jig. This way is much easier and very accurate. Find your spindle height clamp it in place, set your router depth, and you just become a fully fledged speed carpenter. Look at you go! Now you can make these jigs to suit all quadrilateral faceplates. I even made some for my receivers using a similar method. By working out the receiver placement, I can fix this onto the lining and repeat the same process. Give it a try! Build yourself a jig to improve your workflow and make you look like the smartest person on site.
So now that you've learned how I make my lock jigs, it's time for you to go out there and make one yourself. Make a lock jig to suit your need. Go on my Instagram, tag me in it, and I'd love to see what you make. Please do consider subscribing to this channel by hitting that red button down below and giving this video a like if you found it very informative for you. I'd love to make more of these in the future, so more likes, more videos. But now that's it for another how-to video, and I'll see you all next time.